Hello, everyone. I'm Kenny Rice, and welcome to the Horse Racing Show. Glad that you're with us again this week. We have a great show today. One of the best stories you're going to hear in a long time involving Tommy Drury, who has been around for 30 years and picked up his first graded stakes win with Art Collector, who has gone from a 250 to 1 shot when all this derby pool started back in early March to now one of the favorites just behind Tis the Law for the Kentucky Derby. And he will be a story that you'll hear more about. Uh, Tommy is a great guy. He runs a uh, Goshen Nuclear. Uh, Kentucky is his uh, home base, and it's uh, Skylight Stable that he has there. And basically, he's always helped take care of other people's horses. He's helped get other people's horses ready. He has trained. Uh, he has exercised horses. But he's been kind of that go-to guy, almost like a utility player in baseball. And now he's getting his turn at bat, and he's been knocking it out of the park since he took over the training earlier this year. He is four for four with Art Collector, including coming off a win in the Ellis Park Derby following up uh, the Bluegrass Stakes win. So Tommy Drury, one of the great stories in horse racing right now. He'll be joining us in just a few moments. And then later on, we'll be talking to a longtime friend of ours, uh, Lenny Shulman, the noted author, and catch up on what's going on with him and kind of get his take on everything that's going on in the horse racing world. And we welcome in now Ben Chaffins. Hello, Ben. Hello, Kenny. How are you? You know, not do, doing pretty good for this uh, hot summer day here in Kentucky. Yeah, and now we're up to show number 80. Who That's knew? Right. Show number 80. If you would like to, of course, you can go and uh, check us out on YouTube. If there's some episodes out there that you'd like to hear again, or maybe you haven't heard before uh, with some of the Hall of Famers from trainers uh, to rock and roll Hall of Famers uh, like Jerry Moss and Michelle uh, Phillips that have been on the show to pretty much every trainer and owner and uh, jockey of significance in the last year or so since we've been doing this. And it's pretty easy to do, I understand, Ben, right? You can go check it out and uh, just click on, say, if you want episode 30, and it tells who's on it. That's right. Um, on our YouTube channel, you know, you can go back and watch all the episodes. Uh, so we get some great in-studio guests every so often. And then also uh, it, in the podcast, all our episodes are there for you to go back and listen to. So even when you got a long drive or you're, you're out there mowing your grass or something, you know, listen, put on the podcast, take a listen to some of those great interviews. All right. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. And we hope that people will do it. We thank you for the support of this show. And uh, one of the reasons are the stories. Now, if you watched over the weekend, last weekend, what a performance by Tis the Law. He blew the field away in the Travers, and Barkley Tag has done one of the great training jobs. He hasn't missed a beat with this horse. He's the only horse that was considered for the Derby, if the Derby had been run the first weekend of May, who is still so viable, and he is going to be, I think, maybe an even-money favorite going into the Kentucky Derby. So you have a star, which all of sports wants, and then you have those upstarts that have come along and most of these horses would not even be on the scene had it not been for COVID-19 because if the Derby had been held in May, uh, these horses we would not have heard about. And a horse like that is Art Collector. And a trainer like that is Tommy Drury, who is getting his time at bat. He's been doing nothing but hitting, hitting it out of the park every time. And uh, I'm happy for him. I think he'll get a lot of uh, attention being a Louisvillian uh, being a guy that's so respected in the horse industry. And then, of course, the big names are going to be popping up, like Bob Baffert is going to be in the picture. John Sheriffs with Honor AP is on the picture. You might remember him from Giacomo. So it's the perfect scenario for the Kentucky Derby. We're going to talk more about that later uh, when we wrap the show up about the Derby that made a big announcement this week. They put a proposal before the governor of Kentucky where they're hoping to have in the ballpark of about 23,000 fans or so. And when you consider all the places where there are no fans in sports, uh, that is still a significant move considering that this week the Big Ten and the Pac-12 announced there will be no football this year. So, Ben, there will be some. It will be a select few that gets to go to the Kentucky Derby, but it looks like there will be a crowd for the Derby, and that's good news. That's always good news. Yeah, because, you know, it keeps you, it keeps you hoping out there. Things continue to progress a little bit. The doors open a little bit. Fans can come in. 
fans will be cheering for this guy, Tommy Drury, who is the trainer of the undefeated this year art collector when we come back here on the Horse Racing Show. Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice. Really glad to have you with us. And I cannot think of a better guest to have at this time of the year than this man. He is a well-respected, noted horseman who, in his own words, is a behind-the-scenes guy. Well, he was a behind-the-scenes guy. Imagine this. Your boss tells you, if you win this thing, you can keep training. That's what happened with Tommy Drury. That horse happened to be art collector, and that was back when he won an allowance race at uh, Churchill Downs to get everything started this year. He's four for four under Tommy's training, and he's coming off big wins in the Bluegrass Stakes and most recently the Ellis Park Derby, and he joins us now as certainly one of the top contenders for the Kentucky Derby in a few days. Tommy, welcome into the show. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having me. I tell you, you know, uh, the people have known you for years. Uh, they know about uh, the Skylot operation that you run out in Goshen, Kentucky, not far. What, about 25 miles or so from Louisville, I believe? Yes, that's correct, yes. And, and, you know, you're the guy that when horses are not doing too well, they're coming back from an injury, a lot of people like, uh, you know, in the past, like guys, I would forget a name, but like Seth Hancock at Claiborne Farm or Billy Mott, uh, the Hall of Fame trainer. Uh, you know, that you'll help them out. Uh, I believe Tom's detente, you worked with him a little bit, uh, for Al Stahl. Uh, you know, th this is what you do and you get these horses ready and you've helped a lot of people and not gotten all the credit for it sometimes, but certainly by the people you've helped, but what's it like now to be front and center in this whole derby picture? You know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's definitely different. It's, it, it's been life changing. Um, you know, as you mentioned, we've always been the ones that, uh, you know, whatever these guys need us to do, uh, you know, sometimes it might be a young horse that needs to get started. Sometimes it might be an older horse that's injured. And, you know, we just try to fill in the gaps wherever needed. And and, and, and it's been a good niche for me. It's, it's, it's put me in a good spot in the industry, and it's allowed me to deal with uh, the upper-level clientele, if you will. And, and uh, you know, that, that within itself has been huge for me. And uh, to, to now all of a sudden be in this situation, it's just uh, – you know, this is just a whole nother animal here. And, uh, uh, you know, just, just so, so happy and proud of my horse right now. I, you know, I'm, I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it's not, it's not about me. It's about him and, and what he's doing. And, you know, you see him just kind of slowly, but surely he's, you know, he's starting to get fans and, you know, people are, are checking in on him and wanting to come see him and things of that nature. And it's just, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's just been a lot of fun. Well, it's been a lot of fun to watch him. And, and it's been a lot of fun to read about this story, and as more and more people learn about this story, first off, he was in another barn last year. He's owned by Bruce Lunsford. Uh, people know him, noted Louisville businessman. Uh, and then this year, uh, at one time, I think he was going to go to Rusty Arnold because of COVID. They couldn't ship him out. There were some problems moving around. Uh, he's sticking with you because you're such a good horseman, Bruce is. But I believe he told you, if you win this race, you keep this horse. And you won the race, and you kept him all the way through. Now four for four under you. Yeah, it's you know, and and I, you know, I've always, you know, I've always had faith in my ability to train a horse. Uh, but you know, so much of training horses is just about the opportunities that you get. And you know, I'd like to think that that our win percentage kind of shows that for the quality of horse we get year in and year out, we we normally, you know, we normally do the best we can with them. And, and you know, but up to this point, there's just, I, I've just not had the opportunity to, to have a horse like Art Collector. And, you know, Bruce is, I mean, what do you say, you know? I mean, a guy gives you an opportunity like this and, and, and kind of sends you on your way. And he's, you know, he's let me do everything I needed to do. And, 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 uh, you know, if anything, Bruce is the kind of guy that's, uh, you know, he's calling me every morning saying, Hey, are you having fun? And, and, and don't forget to enjoy this, you know, and, and things like that. So it's, uh, you know, gosh, it, it, it's just, uh, it, it, it has been kind of storybook in a way. It, it really has. Did you ever feel pressure when he said, well, if you win, you get to keep this horse to keep training him? Well, you feel pressure with all of them, but that's normally, I'm, I'm going to put more pressure on myself than anyone else is ever going to put on me. I just, you know, you, I mean, this is, this is what you do. And, and, uh, you know, whether it's a five claimer or art collector, you, you know, your job is to try to get the most out of that horse and to try to figure out, you know, what, what each individual horse needs and, you know, what, you know, all the details that go with that distance surface, things of that nature. And, 
uh, you know, for, for art collector to just fall into my lap the way he did and, and to just continue to get better and better and to answer, you know, we throw something at him and he just answers it and moves on to the next one. And, uh, and, and we've been in a situation here where, you know, we've, we've needed every little detail to go just perfect for us to be able to, to be where we're at today. And, uh, and more often than not, that doesn't happen in horse racing. So, uh, so it's, yeah, it, it's just, it's just been a really special couple of months for us. And, you know, our collector will point out while everything's been going great, of course, for you, uh, this isn't like you inherited a horse that most people thought was a, even close to a Derby contender and certainly wouldn't have been a Derby contender if the Derby was run the first Saturday in May. I think at one time early on in the, the betting, or, you know, sometime around March, he was 250 to one. I think after a couple of wins, he dropped the 75 to one. Now you're in the top two or three out there. I've seen anywhere from like uh, uh, four to one to about six to one. So, uh, you know, congratulations to you because you've just, everything has gelled with you and the horse. I don't know if there was a particular moment where you just felt it was all coming together. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. I, I was speaking to a friend on the phone one morning. It would have been the, the latter part of April, the first part of May. And I was joking. I said, you know, with this derby getting moved back the way it is, we may not have even seen the derby winner yet. We may not have any idea who that is. And, you know, these three-year-olds, they're going to change. They're going to mature. They're going to catch up. And, you know, I I, I I had no idea that, <laughs> you know, that, that uh, one of the one of the favorites for the race is standing in my own barn. I, I, and I, I'd be lying to you if I told you otherwise. So uh, so, it, yeah, it, it's it's just really been special. And it's it's, you know, the covid stuff. I, I jokingly tell people all the time I'm I'm probably the only person in America that found the silver lining in the covid mess. And, you know, I, I, I you just keep reminding yourself that everything happens for a reason and, and that, you uh, you know, this is the opportunity we've been waiting on our entire life. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's up to, you know, it's up to me to, to make the most of it. So that's, that's really all we're trying to do. He is making the most of it. Tommy Drury with us, who is the trainer of Art Collector, four for four this year, a Bluegrass Stakes winner and the Ellis Park winner uh, just over the weekend. Was there any thought about after, after winning the Bluegrass Stakes that you might just train right up to the Derby? Not really. I, I, you know, that the I felt like the bluegrass was really the first race this year that he got tested any at all. You know, those first couple of allowance races, he, he just kind of inhaled those horses. And, and I, I, I was a little concerned going into the bluegrass. I'm, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, man, I hope he got enough out of those allowance races. And, you know, that Philly, I, they, they hooked up the head of the stretch and, you know, they're for, you know, for a 16th of a mile, that race could have gone either way. So, uh, so I, I, there was no question in my mind that we needed one more, but the big, the big factor in that was we needed the right one. And, and, uh, and fortunately we were able to get what we were looking for at Ellis. And, you know, I, 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 I think I was probably a little more nervous for the Ellis race than, than I was the bluegrass truth be told. Wow. Yeah. Because th I guess that was the one that you knew for sure. If you're going on to the Derby. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, I, I felt like our horse, you know, could, could get us to the Derby as long as everything goes right. But, you know, this is the final prep leading up to the Derby and you want him to do enough, but you don't want him to have to overdo it. Uh, you know, initially I was thinking the Ellis race would go with the shorter field and, you know, you, you walk out of the paddock, you're one to nine in a 13 horse field drawn down inside where you know, you're going to have to commit. And, uh, that's, that's why most, most horse trainers have ulcers in situations like that. So, uh, but I, I, you know, I'm just so proud of my horse. I, you know, I kind of left the trip up to Brian and, you know, he felt like, let's take it to him. And, and, uh, and he did, he was able to get a, you know, a nice breather from the, from the half mile pole to the quarter pole. And then, you know, he kicked home the right way. So, uh, so, uh, again, you know, how often does everything go just right in horse racing? Not, not very often. And, and for us to get the dream trip, like we did the other day, it was, you know, it was, uh, you know, you just kind of pinching yourself and making sure this is all real. Well, it's certainly very real for Tommy Drury, the trainer of art collector, one of the favorites for the Kentucky Derby. We'll have more with Tommy when we come right back. Don't go away here on the horse racing show. Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. Delighted to be talking with Tommy Drury, the trainer of Art Collector, one of the favorites for the Derby. A real storybook, a well-respected guy in horse racing for 30 years. Uh, runs a great operation, Skylight in Goshen, Kentucky. Uh, 
handling horses, getting horses ready uh, for races, helping out with uh, pretty much everybody. You've probably helped most of the people in horse racing, Tommy, at one time or another, I would imagine, to help them get a stable or, uh, you know, whatever they needed uh, regarding their horse getting ready for a race or recuperating or rehabbing or whatever. Yeah, we've been, you know, we've been very lucky. We've been able to work with the the biggest majority of the trainers around Churchill and, uh, you know, guys are giving us opportunities and then they're, they're kind enough to have us back. So, uh, so it, it, it's really, you know, it's been good. I actually met Bruce by doing, you know, I used to do this for Frankie brothers when he was training and, uh, you know, that led to getting madcap escapade as a two year old, which was Bruce's, you know, grade one winning Philly that, uh, that won the Ashland and, she was actually the first grade one winner that we were ever associated with at the training center. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you just try to, you know, you try to do a good job. You try to be honest with people, hope they'll have you back and hope that, you know, that's going to lead to more opportunities for you. And that's, that's, that's really, you know, that's, that's kind of how my business has grown and expanded over the years. And, you know, we've just, we've just been blessed. How many phone calls and texts and, uh, emails and all that have you been getting since Art Collector won the Bluegrass all the way up through this win at Ellis Park over the weekend? Oh, gosh, it's been insane. I, I at The morning after the Bluegrass, uh, I looked at my phone, and I had 312 text messages. Uh, uh, that was, you know, that doesn't count the Facebook stuff and the other social media things that's being sent your way. And, you know, it, it just, it, it really makes you feel good. It, it, it you know, it, it makes you feel like, you know, obviously, you you know, you've got some people rooting for you and in your corner. And, uh, uh, you know, that that's that's I can talk about the horse all day long, but I, I just can't find the words for for how I feel. You know, it just I mean, it just it, it's just been so special. Everybody's been, you know, really kind. And, and you know, I, by doing what I do, uh, working for some of these other trainers, I've I've got some pretty good lifelines out there if I have a question or if I you know, I need to bounce something off of somebody and, and, you know, it's sure nice to, it's sure nice to know that I've got that option when I need it. Well, you know, there is that old saying, and sometimes it holds true. It does for you, you know, good things do happen to good people and, uh, you know, paying your dues and all these other things that can be cliched, but not in your case. I mean, you've done everything prepared for this moment. Like you say, a lot of times it's, do you get the opportunity and you certainly seized it and, uh, our collector is certainly running with it for you. What was special about him when you first when you first got him and you were taking him around? When did you think, you know, I don't know if I'll have a Derby contender, but he's a pretty good horse. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when I knew when I knew he must be all right is uh, Brian Hernandez and I are really good friends, uh, you know, outside of the industry. And uh, when our collector was stopped on and turned out, Brian sent me a couple of different texts and said, "Hey, hey, where's Art Collector? Do you have Art Collector?" And you know, I responded back and said, "No, I, I, I'm not sure where he's at. I don't have him." And uh, and then you know, one morning you get the call, "Hey, we're we're going to send this horse named Art Collector to you." And you know, I knew who he was because I knew Brian had you know he had ridden him as in his last race as a two year old. He really liked him, so I, I knew some things about the horse. Um, I, you know, I knew he, I knew he was a, a really nice colt that had a, had a tremendous amount of upside to him, but I, I'd be, I'd be lying to you if I told you I was even considering Kentucky Derby at the time. I mean, we were just thinking, let's, you know, let's get this kid back to where he needs to be and then, you know, get him moved on to, to whomever Bruce decides to send him to. And that, that's really was my only thought process was making sure that that horse got to the trainer that he was going to safe and sound and happy and where he was supposed to be. As far as the art collector, as he has progressed along, Tommy, what do you like best about him getting ready for a mile and a quarter test? You know, I, I, I like his versatility. I, I think uh, so many of these three-year-olds, you know, they just don't have the seasoning yet. And, you know, they they need their trip. They need things to go their way. And and I don't see that with this horse. Uh, you know, the, the race off the shelf at Churchill going seven-eighths, he, I think he had two horses beat at the half-mile pole that day and was actually kind of stuck in between horses there for, you know, for a sixteenth of a mile. And he, you know, he kicked on and went on and inhaled them. And then, you know, you're running back around two turns. He, you know, slow pace. He goes wire to wire and stalking type position in the bluegrass. And then, you know, we kind of felt like at Ellis, we, you know, I mean, if you – if you get away a step tardy and everybody, you know, that short run to the first turn, we knew everybody was going to be dropping over and, you know, uh, Brian needed to kind of get him involved and, and he was able to do that. And I, 
you know, I just, I, I think you need, if you look at the Derby, historically speaking, I think these horses need a little bit of stop and go to them to where, you know, they can get themselves out of a spot, but then shut back off and give themselves a breather. And, and not all three-year-olds are going to do that. So uh, that would be the big thing for me that, that I think this horse is going to bring to the table. What's this like for you, uh, local guy? You're going to the Derby. You've seen a lot of Derby. You're around Churchill Downs a lot, but now to be there, Derby Day, I don't care when it's held, of course, obviously September 5th this time around, but to, to have that moment, and even if there's only 20-some thousand instead of 160,000 when you walk over, uh, have you pictured any of this in your mind yet, Tommy? You know, one of my favorite things about the Derby has always been the walkover, and uh, just as a as a fan of horse racing, you know, if you're if you're near the backside when that takes place, I always like to to go down and stand and watch the horses as they're going onto the track, and you know, you can just kind of look at everybody's expressions and 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 you wonder, you know, from afar, you wonder what it's like to be in that situation. You know, what would it be like to, you know, even just to go over with one you're associated with, and you know, now to be in a situation where we could potentially go over with our own horse. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, what do you say? I mean, it's, it, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's something you dream about. I, you know, I've compared it to hitting the lottery. You know, you always say, Oh, I'd do this, I'd do that. But, but when you actually hit it, you know, I mean, it's just like you, you're, you know, it, 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 you just, you, you, I just can't find the words to describe it. I mean, it's just, it, it's just unbelievable. In 1991, I believe, there was an 18-year-old kid that weighed about 110 or 12 pounds, something like that, Tommy Drury, that applies for his trainer's license, and they were hesitant because they didn't think you were 18. Is that right? He actually asked to see my driver's license. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I look like I was about 14 when I was 18, so uh, so I, he had good reason. But, uh, yeah, he, just had, he did ask to see my driver's license just to double-check my age. Now you've been, you know, you've been walking hot. You've been working around. You've been doing all this stuff as a teenager. So I mean, this was kind of like a, I guess I don't know, destination would be it. But this is certainly a pattern that you were going to follow as a profession. It seems like from a young age to where you are now with a Derby contender. Yeah, it's all you know. It's all I've ever known. It's all I've ever wanted to do. And uh, I, uh, you know, there were there were some tough years. You know, getting going and. Uh, you know, I guess I think there was two or three years there where I didn't want to race. So, uh, you know, you there were there were certainly times that I I would ask myself, you know, is this <laughs> did I you know did I make the right decision here? But uh, you know, but once I once I got to I got to the training center and started doing that, and you know, guys that I had galloped horses for over the years, they were kind enough to help me out. You know, Frankie Brothers being a big part of Bill Mott. Uh, you know, once you start working for guys like that, you you've automatically got a little credibility to where you're able to move forward. And, you know, I certainly wouldn't be where I'm at today without the help of those guys early on. And and, uh, you know, we've just tried to keep building off of it and, you know, try to try to get a little stronger and, and you know, upgrade your quality every year. And, and, and it's just, you know, it's just kind of happening. It, it just keeps kind of going the right way. What do you do now to, with Art Collector in these uh, last few days leading up to September 5th? You know, we're going to get back on him tomorrow. He seems like he came out of the race well. And, uh, you know, obviously he's just been uh, been hand walking and grazing the last couple of days. And we'll get back on him tomorrow, let him have a little spin around the racetrack, just make sure, you know, he's taking us on this ride. I mean, we're, we're not taking him. And, you know, we want to we, we just want to see how he is, see – you know, you'd like to see a little animation tomorrow when he's jogging and you'd like to see him, you know, pretty forward in his way of moving. And, you know, if he looks to be a little quiet, we may jog him a couple more days. If he, you know, if he looks like he's good, then we'll, we'll get back to galloping and start to figure out what our plan is. Well, the plan has been perfect so far. I mean, I don't think that, you know, most trainers look back, well, I might've done this or that. I don't know if you can look back and say, I would have done anything different from uh, the time you inherited him when you were said if you win if when bruce lunsford said you win you keep him all the way up to now it seems like there hasn't been a misstep you know so much of it though is and people have asked me about that and so much of of the plan with our collector really uh, it, it's been because of our lack of choices you know uh, we really haven't had a lot of options with him and uh which which has made each of these races so important uh you know he won going seven eighths well the next logical step was to get him around two turns he wins the allowance race around two turns which we we actually asked ben huffman to move that race for us uh 
so that it would work for if, if he did run well, we'd still have an opportunity to make the bluegrass. And he was kind enough to do that. And I, I think it's again, you know, every little thing had to go just right for us to be here. And, you know, he won the bluegrass that gave him the points to get to the big dance, but then you're, you know, in the back of your mind, you feel like you need one more. And, and, you know, I certainly wasn't going to put him on a van and go to, go to New York. So uh, the Ellis race, just, it was a logical race for him. We weren't, you know, we weren't even thinking about the purse as much as we just wanted to get that foundation and that, that stepping stone to get us to where we want to be. And it, it just went perfect. Well, with all the things that have happened this year, we certainly don't need to keep going over it and over it. You know, it's been a life-changing experience for everybody in all walks of life. Uh, this is one of the great stories is how things have fallen into place for one of the great guys in horse racing, Tommy Drury, who has Art Collector, uh, one of the top contenders for the Derby. And I know a lot of people are going to be cheering for you. And, uh, you know, this is a dream that keeps on going, Tommy. So congratulations on everything. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you down the road and stay with us. There's more ahead on the Horse Racing Show. Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. This is episode number 80. And when we get to milestones, I think of one guy, Lenny Schulman, noted, respected, award-winning journalist, has written one of the best books ever about racing. It's about the horse Justify that won the Triple Crown, uh, in addition to being a novelist and an all-around good guy and a uh, great friend. And welcome back to the show number 80, Lenny. Ah, oh, thank you. You know, round numbers, are, uh, they're frightening, but, uh, but it's an honor, always an honor to be with you, Kenny. Well, uh, how's, how's life in Lenny Schulman world right now? You know, it, it, it's okay. I'm actually uh, getting the dogs prepped up, and we'll be, we're heading out to Saratoga uh, this weekend for three weeks, so looking forward to that. Um, you know, our, our annual vacation, the dogs insisted on going, so we're, we're going to do that. And, uh, you know, other than that, I've been binging Dexter, so that's been good, uh, you know, just for some light entertainment. Yeah, yeah it's a, you know, it's a feel-good show. <laughs> Uh, you know, my, my binging is a little different than most people. Most people, you know, they take a, a TV show and go through five seasons or whatever. I, I take one movie and watch it 25 times, you know, so, uh, so it's a little different, but I've been doing that with the movie Green Book because I'm crazy about it. So uh, It is. It's a terrific movie. And that's a movie I did not see in the theater. I tell you another one I just watched that I did not see in the theater, and I just watched it. Uh, Jojo Rabbit. That's a really interesting movie. Okay, we'll put that on the list. And uh, so anyway, so that, there's our movie selection, folks. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode. <laughs> and, and now we shall talk about Sport of Kings. And the Kentucky Derby, they made an announcement at Churchill Downs this week for Derby 146 uh, that ballpark uh, right around maybe 23,000 would be in there, which would be about 14% of the record capacity of over 170,000 in 2015. No general admission, no standing room. Nobody's going to be walking around. You're going to be sitting down, but at least you're going to be going in and you'll receive a lovely gift of a disposable mask and hand sanitizer as you enter Churchill Downs. And Lenny, will you be among those 23,000? I'm going to be in Saratoga uh, still, so uh, that'll be my first derby in Saratoga, uh, which which is going to be fun. But um, I'm also glad that you will be um, among the twenty three thousand. Uh, I hope you're, I hope you're safe there. But some some of these, uh, you know, some of these rules that Churchill Institute are are a little puzzling to me. I I just read that uh, you know drunk patrons have to pass out at least six feet apart. <laughs> and, and judging from having to step over them for 20 years i'm not sure if that's actually going to work or not <laughs> i don't know if that's, that's enforceable but uh yeah that's what that's that's one thing the other thing that concerns me is uh you know they, they've uh discontinued the uh the shuttles from off-site parking locations so the the, the quote here is quote, guests are encouraged to utilize neighborhood parking options, unquote. So, so, Kenny, I think those options are either you get your 
tires stolen or you get the complete car stolen. Uh, it, it depends what package you buy, I think. Uh, well, the, 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 the drunk people, get drunk responsibly also is the message here, right? Get drunk and, and, and measure the distance between fellow drunks. Well, I think so. And I, I'm also questioning, since they're going to have 500 uh, hand sanitizer stations, can, can you drink that stuff? Because that's probably going to go down also, you know. Well, you know, I guess if you put it over some ice and put a, a, a mint sprig in it, they might make it a new drink. <laughs> I mean, it's 70% alcohol, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I foresee potential problems there. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that the Derby is going to have that, uh, you know, that you hope for every year coming in, you got a star in Tis the Law who's just been terrific this year yeah. and would have been one of the contenders had the Derby been the first Saturday in May. And then you've got some horses come along, and we just had Tommy Dreary on, like like an art collector. It's one of the, you know, kind of feel-good stories, not just this year, but in a long time. So you kind of got that mix that uh, if you were there covering the Derby this year, you would certainly have some some things to write about. Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the whole Sakatoga story, which, of course, has been told, but, uh, you know, that, that's just such a great story. and. I think Steve Haskin coined it, but they're they're kind of like the cicadas, right? Every 17 <laughs> years, they, they they come back with a with a Derby horse, and uh, so you know that's a great story. Yeah, Tommy Drury's a really good story. My friend Greg Harbutt, uh, you know, who was third uh, in the Ellis Park Derby with his horse, and he's got a consortium of people, and that you know he's uh, he's an ancestor of. of uh, you know, the man of war's favorite, famous groom, Will Harbutt. I think it was his uh, great-grandfather. Um, so those guys would be a great story if they get to the Derby. So, yeah, it's funny, Kenny, the way it works out, because if the, if the Derby were have were to be run at the normal day, you know, you would have had Tis the Law against those two Baffert horses that won at Oakland that day, who, you know, and they doll in Charlotte, neither of whom stuck around, but... You know, they seem to have been, you know, the the best competition he he might have faced. So, yeah. Oddly enough, it might it might have worked out better for for Tis the Law, uh, you know, to do it this way. And it, it it seems to me, and I know we can't look too far ahead uh, when we're dealing with thoroughbreds, but uh, you know, if he were to win and Gamine were to win uh, the Oaks, and could you imagine them? hooking up in the Preakness uh, a, a month after that. So that that might be that, – that would be the ideal scenario for excitement, I think. Yeah, I th well, that, you know what? That would be a perfect scenario, wouldn't it? Because there's still a lot of people think uh, Gamine is the best three-year-old out there, regardless well, of gender. Well, I think that, I think you're looking at those two, certainly, as the best two. And uh, I, I, I don't want to say anything. Uh, against his walk because he's just looked superb every time he, he goes to the track. So, but uh, what, what a race that would be if that comes to pass, you know, that, uh, that might get me to Baltimore for crying out loud. Well, you, we'll, we'll plan on going. We'll plan on going. You we'll know, go so many oh, good no. things, so many good things happened to me in Baltimore as you've witnessed, uh, I witnessed <laughs> too, but, uh, I know. <laughs> you, you, you know, some people are going to say right now, well, if Tis the Law wins the Derby and the Preakness, will that be like a triple crown? My take on it is, okay, I know it's a mile and an eighth Belmont. I was there, uh, you know, among the 50 people there, I was one. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you go 77 days between a triple crown race that's never been done before, and that's going to be what's going to happen from Belmont to Kentucky. Uh, and then you're talking about keeping a horse good from June to all the way through the first week of October. I mean, this is going to be an incredible effort on the horse's part and a great training job by Barkley Tag if he pulls this off. So, uh, you know, I tell him, don't worry about asterisks and things right now. Let's just see if he can be done because this is quite a feat. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think if this was 1970 and we were looking at this, we might be able to say, ah, this isn't the same. This is, you know, look at all the time. But the, the way it is nowadays when you can't keep a horse decent for two races in a row, it almost seems like yeah. it's more difficult to win it, you know, over the course of five months than it would be over the course of five weeks, right? Yeah. Hey, you know, imagine the derby field we could put together of the horses 
that aren't around anymore that were were contenders. You know, Maxfield and some of those and the Baffert horses, like you mentioned, that yeah. have uh, fallen by the wayside. Yeah. So I think you know, yeah, I I, I agree. The mile and an eighth is certainly different, but on the other hand, the way he won that race, I don't think there's anybody in the world who wouldn't have thought that he'd have won it if it were a mile and a half. So, yeah, it, it's an odd deal, but, uh, you know, he, the way he looks, he certainly looks like a horse worthy uh, to be celebrated in whatever way people want to celebrate it. If you're a traditionalist and don't think it's the same, fine. But, you know, if he goes on to win these next two races, he's he's certainly a worthy horse to, to be in the discussion with all the rest of them. We're talking with the author, the noted journalist, Lenny Shulman. More with Lenny when we come back here on the Horse Racing Show. Stay with me. Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. Kenny Rice here. Glad you're with us. Delighted to have a longtime friend, Lenny Shulman, with us. Uh, one of the great books is Justified. How's that book going? I mean, I, I, I see people still reading it. I've reread it a couple times. Uh, you know, it's just a great story. And, you know, maybe there's a tis the law story out there if it all falls into place this year. But, uh, you know, that justifies story is still something amazing. Yeah, he's he is. And uh, it's, it's good to see that he himself is doing well. And he's got babies on the ground now that numerous people have. Uh, well, not just told me it's it's out there, but uh, they, they look like they're going to be runners. And so. You know, not not surprising given his talent and also his looks that he would, you know, get good looking horses who look to be strong. And, you know, it, it's going to be great to, to, to have his legacy continue. And, uh, yeah, the book's doing great. And I actually have uh, signed up about next year. I'll be coming out with a with a collection of my uh, blood horse interviews that I've done through the years with with many people in the thoroughbred business and the university. Uh, Press of Kentucky is going to be publishing that um, next year. So we're looking forward to that. And it's it's really exciting because uh, not because of any great writing that I do, but, you know, j- just the variety of interview subjects I've been lucky enough to, to sit with through the years. And uh, it's a really, really interesting cross-section going from, you know, Kentucky hard boots to celebrities to legends to Kentucky Derby winners to uh, women in the sport. And uh, it's really a a fantastic uh, cross section of people. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So, you know, I don't know if there's another sport except horse racing that does have such a, an eclectic mix of people that you, that you just meet along the way and you get an interview along the way that you, you know, you would have never met probably in another sport, you know, and and I'm thinking like that people like, you know, like from Jerry Moss to MC hammer at one time when he came into the Derby and, and, you know, as well as like Lucas and Baffert and Pletcher and Zito and all these guys that are, you know, kind of obvious, but you know, I I think two or three, maybe four years ago, I I don't even know, Tony Danza's at the Derby and I do an interview with him. He's on the backside and it's just really an interesting mix of, of like you say, celebrities, the rich and famous, and then the the diehard, the horse racing guys. Yeah, I some of my most memorable what and going back and reading over these interviews and working on them, you know, I, I just one of the most memorable one was, was this guy named Elmer Clark, who was a groom uh, for Ben Jones back in the Calumet days of the '40s, and I was lucky enough where he kind of contacted the blood horse and. Uh, Man, you know, came from that era when when those grooms were all these great black horsemen, you know, used to be jockeys and trainers themselves. And then, you know, unfortunately kind of got aced out of those jobs, but they hung around as grooms. And, you know, he was there during the Citation Cold Town Derby controversy and listened to what Ben Jones was telling our Caro and Lester Pier- Leroy Pearson, the two jockeys and so those stories are in there and people like Sam Shepard, who was involved in breeding and is just a amazing guy to sit with, you know, David Milch, who, who just the, the greatest TV writer of all time and an unbelievable guy to sit with. And, you know, the other thing, Kenny is no, you know, horse racing just doesn't get credit for the participation of women in it through the years. 
um, you know, going back to Elizabeth Kane and Elizabeth Dangerfield, who ran, you know, the, the stud farm where Man of War, you know, was and right. raised him. And just the, on a level playing field, not to have their own league, you know, but, but just to participate alongside, you know, men in the sport for so many years. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, to, to have stuff with Penny Chenery and, you know, Josephine Abercrombie and Barbara Banky and, and uh, Charlotte Weber and Helen Alexander and just, all of these amazing, amazing participants uh, in the thoroughbred world. I, I don't think it gets the credit for, you know, for that kind of inclusion that it's had for, you know, a century now. I'm going to buy that book. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, and for somebody who's sat and read it over 20 times, I may be a little <laughs> sick of it, but, but I just think it's, uh, no kidding, it, it's got fascinating stuff in there from, from people who are, you know, just great people in the sport over the last 20 years. So, uh, And this will be coming out next spring? I think spring or summer, yeah, so something like that. So uh, I will certainly let you know. Well, you, you must, you must. And if we're still going, you know, you must come back and be on this show. Yeah, I'll even uh, I'll even break sitting with you, uh, you know, for the chance to you know ha have it on set. You know, you know, we haven't I haven't been to the studio. I don't even know how long it's been like three months. You know, uh, Ben Chaffins is engineering from the studio. I'm at home. You're at home. Uh, by the way, I'm wearing a mask and I've sanitized myself <laughs> completely. So you're totally you're totally safe. I just want you to know that. I'm just glad that the cool supply place hasn't taken over the studio, uh, that, that it's still there. That's, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I was worried Wayne Hughes had made a public storage place out of it. Not, not yet, but then I don't think he knows where we are. <laughs> so we got that going for us. You know, I, I just did. I was out at Spencer. I, I had never been there, Kenny, which is kind of funny, you know, in yeah. all the years here. But I, I'm doing a story on them for Keeneland Magazine. And uh, what, what a lovely farm, a historic farm with that stallion complex and the Nashua statue out there. And uh, got, got to visit with Into Mischief and Beholder. Just, just had a wonderful time out there with Ned Toffee. So, uh, yeah, they're doing a hell of a job out there. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful farm. It's been ages. Mr. Combs, I remember one of my early, early interviews was with him wow. uh, out there, You're, you know, back in the 80s. And I remember Elizabeth Taylor's daughter came in. Yes, think, she was I a think, sculpture. Yes, and she was, was a sculpture, sculpture who, who, yeah. who, who unveiled a statue out there. Yes. And, uh, you know, so again, that's, again, as we talked about, the, the many people you meet, the many walks of life that you cross uh, – in the horse racing business. And one of my favorites is when I met this guy from New York by way of California who came to Kentucky and worked for the blood horse, Lenny Shulman. What a segue. That, that is why you're a pro. That's, that's it. That, that's all I, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> you are a pro's pro. I, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, Lenny, I can't thank you enough. It's so great to catch up with you anytime. And, and, you know, I'm really excited seriously about the book. Uh, because your interviews that I've read, I think almost every one over the years, the blood horse, just terrific. And I look forward to that and safe travels to Saratoga. I will wave to you, uh, at the Derby in just a few days. I hope you do a, uh, I, I, Kenny, I, I hope they have you do a, a feature on camera of the neighborhood parking options. I, I, if I were you, I would, I would buck for that assignment. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be masked up and all sanitized and ready to go. So I, I will be safe and, and you stay <laughs> safe as well. My friend. Take care. All right. Thank you. Lenny Showman here on the Horse Racing Show. More coming up after this. And welcome back into the Horse Racing Show. Really enjoyed talking to Tommy Drury, one of the great guys. I mean, he's a guy that's worked hard. He's well-respected, and he's getting his moment. And that's what uh, life and sports are all about when you get that chance to step up and have success. And he's doing that now with Art Collector. And I know a lot of people are going to be excited about seeing Tommy and seeing that horse take on what's going to be the strong favorite in Tis the Law. And so you've got that perfect scenario, a big star 
and some uh, maybe Cinderella stories trying to take him on. Always good to catch up with Lenny Schulman, who has interesting takes on the world, needless to say, my friend, and I uh, look forward to his book coming out about all the people in horse racing that he's had the chance to talk to over the years, just like we have on this show. This is episode 80, but if you'd like to listen back to some of the other people we've spoken to, uh, coaches such as Avery Johnson, a uh, Super Bowl winning coach and Bill Parcells, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers Jerry Moss and Michelle uh, Phillips have been on this show, as well as Hall of Fame trainers and jockeys, uh, successful owners, uh, people from all walks of life, which make horse racing interesting. And you can look them up on YouTube and say you want to see episode 25 or episode 33 or, you know, a couple of weeks ago. It's easy to find. So Ben Chaffins tells me, and I trust his judgment because he knows this technical stuff. That's right, Kenny. I mean, it's really easy. Just on our YouTube page, uh, start, go on the videos and click whichever one you want to watch. It's that simple. <laughs> well, see, there you have it. So uh, any of those 80 episodes, uh, feel free to check them out. Thank you for your support on the radio, for iTunes and Stitcher, for being able to tune in and uh, listen to us each week. I'm really excited. The Kentucky Derby is going on with fans now. It looks that way. I think that's going to happen. 1875 it started longest continually held sporting event churchill downs did a great job when they said september 5th back in the spring when covid's first starting and spreading they said september 5th their goal their hope was by that time some things could straighten out a little bit and maybe there would be some fans because it's such a special event known throughout the world the most famous horse race in the world and it looks like now there'll be about 23,000 people in that ballpark at least that will be able to show up at Churchill Downs on September 5th. And that will make for excitement. Think of all the sporting events out there. would love to have half that number right now. So kudos to Churchill. Derby coming up. We'll be talking about that more in the next few weeks. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kenny Rice, and this has been the Horse Racing Show.